Opening day. Opening day, September 15th. Right now it's 5.43 in the morning. It's been a long time coming since last year. Yeah. Where are we? We're in God's country right now. We'll be hunting archery mule deer. Well, I couldn't get to bed last night. I mean, I know we're messing each other back and forth. I think we're pretty fortunate this year to get the permission on the land that we got. No kidding. Plan is, I know for you to go to the grain bin spot, you're gonna crawl on top of the grain bin and scout yeah. an area. Hopefully put a big mule deer to bed. You know, we're su super fortunate to live in such an area too. It gives us the opportunity to hunt big mule deer like this. You know, let's say during the day we, we have a lull, we can fish deep in Baker Lake because it has one of the best fisheries in all of Saskatchewan, which has some of the best fisheries in all of the world. Pretty stoked and uh, let's get it done today. Yeah, buddy. It's nice and cool. I think it's only like eight degrees. So we're pretty fortunate. A couple of days ago, it said it was supposed to be like 20 mils of rain and uh, it's not right now. So here's our turn off. I rolled up to the grain bin spot where I'd been scouting all last week and two local guys had beat me there. You know, to have somebody give us permission but then not tell us there's gonna be other people out here, it's kind of frustrating because put in all that work to scout. Of course, opening day, hey. Yeah. Frustrating. Yeah. But light's coming up so we gotta go get set up. Let's go. This one might be the best one. So I got my spotting scope set up. You can see those other guys to the south of us. Thursday. Just a waiting game. See if we can um, we see something from across this field. So even if I see any bucks from here, so will those other local guys. It would be a foot race to see who gets there first. So Jason just sent me a message on our Prairie Hunter uh, um, group chat. And uh, he said he's watching a buck, but not the big one from before. He said, but a decent one. No matter how many bucks we saw during our scouting trip, it means nothing right now on opening day. Trying to keep your spirits up when your scouting trip goes so well. And then uh, having a situation unfold like it did this morning on opening day, but I mean, that's what makes hunting, especially archery hunting, exciting and challenging all at the same time. I've got a closet full of shirts that I don't wear. Cable TV and a comfy easy chair. A little fireplace and a big old stack of wood. I got a good, oh, I've got a good. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Yeah. All right, let's roll. Is that a big deer? Another one in the field. Yeah, I don't know that's a big one. One past him. Huge deer. On the right of everything, walking away from us. Yeah. There's like a black spot. Yeah. Look at that black spot. It has giant antlers attached to it. That's a smaller of the two. Is it? The one that was further back. I think that dropped down just that cutout. He was definitely a bigger, bigger deer. Yeah, it's the bigger of the two, the one that right. One looking back at us? Yeah. yeah. Can you tell what it is? Typical or? Typical four by four with small browns. If you look at it through the scope, you can tell that he just bedded down in that wheat field. He's like in the perfect spot to not hunt him. Yeah, impossible spot, right? It's impossible stock. Happy that he's turning his head. And get a look at them a little bit. You see two spots over there. Yeah. Can you tell if those are deer? Yeah, two deer heads are both down. I think they're does. Some earlier. They do. Yeah. 
so many deer in here. Yeah, it's dull. It's like a doe and a fawn. Seems like they're still coming out here. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know if we should move and find more. Or if we should see what he does. Like, hypothetically, this is best case scenario, right? It would give us time to get to where we want to get and hope that he moves back to us. We can see where he, if he decides to move back to that cut line, that you see exactly where he goes in. Yeah. Can I see your binos? Then pounce like jaguars. Pounce like rabid lynx. <laughs> Not just the regular lynx. I'm talking like lynx that have a bad attitude. No morals. Zero morals. Hey, there's another deer. Oh, that's a bird. The old bird buck. Oh, bird buck. You eat wine though. I went further north to catch up with Jason on a section of land he'd been scouting since we split out this morning. And so it was coming down this way. Saw a couple does here and there, but then that giant hill over there popped out at me. And I thought, hey, why not get up there and take a peek what's on the other side? I went all the way up it, just crawled on top so I wouldn't skyline myself. And then out walks this freaking thing. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. I was watching him and I just kept seeing this side and he was looking around and whatever. And then he turned and looked at me and this side was just a club. Nothing forked off of it. He's like well over 200 inches on this side and just a giant mainframe right here. Really? Nothing off of it. <laughs> it's the goofiest thing. I don't know, do we go in after them at hopes to see them? Your call. You saw the deer, so. It's gnarly, it's gnarly looking. I'd hate to like walk away from it and not see it again. Yeah. But then again, the odds of us seeing it before it sees us, low. So you're asking me if I want to stalk a deer. Now, this stalk is, I think, 40% skill and 60% luck. But if we don't try, then I just saw a big buck this morning. So Jason started on a direct path towards where he saw that club buck earlier in the day. And I flanked him on the ridge. This is where they walked across this morning. I can see them from a perch up there. They went through here and then out another opening. I hope they're still in that area. See why deer live here. It's never ending cover. Limitless water. Just beautiful, beautiful place. Hello, darkness, my old friend. spooked him right to us. Oh. He must have smelled you or something. Did you find the arrow? No. When he turned around, when he turned around to run away, it was just freaking bouncing around. I dare you to try to take a shot at a deer and hit it square in the antlers the second time. It just wouldn't happen.
We happened to be posting one of our pictures from earlier in the day when one of our followers messaged us regarding a hunting spot in the area. That fence line is where the same group of four bucks crosses every night. One of those bucks is a double drop time. They're in that field every morning and every evening. So this field here. And come out of there, come in here, feed and whatever. Like it's all real green stuff. I don't know what it is, but oh, they're, for sure, they're obviously yeah. feeding in yeah, here. Yeah. We're just trying to think of a better place for us to put our trucks. It's gonna be chilly. Not really. Yeah, but it's gonna be chilly for me. Do you need a hug? <laughs> looks like you need, looks like you need, looks like you need a hug. <laughs> There's a big one with double drop time, so we'll see. 25 minutes till our legal light's done. Two does popped over the fence, two mealy does. They keep coming across the field, but still no bucks. So Jason said he saw, I don't know what, what kind of deer, but a deer coming up the fence line in the south. Sit and wait till our time runs out, I guess. That's all we can do. Unfortunately, we're out of legal light today, so we're headed back to our campsite at Tufts Bay. So Tufts Bay is a campsite just off of Diefenbaker Lake where we decided to set up camp. It has a nice boat launch, nice beach area, uh, and it had pay-by-night campsites that we were able to get into to set up a tent and have a fire and have some food at the end of the day. Here, 